In a groundbreaking revelation from ancient DNA, scientists have finally identified the genetic profile of the builders of Tiwanaku, one of the most influential and mysterious civilizations of ancient South America. Nestled high in the Andean Altiplano, Tiwanaku flourished for nearly a thousand years, leaving behind monumental stone architecture, elaborate ritual complexes, and a cultural footprint that would shape Andean history for generations. But until recently, the true identity of its people remained an enigma. Thanks to the sequencing of ancient genomes from archaeological sites near the heart of Tiwanaku, researchers now offer a conclusive answer. The builders of Tiwanaku were the genetic ancestors of today's Aymara people, whose roots in the region stretch back over a millennium. Around 8,750 years ago, the high-elevation Andes population split from the lowland populations, which was 14,755 years after this population entered South America and around 20,000 years after they entered the Americas, according to genetic modeling estimates. The modern Aymara, whose language and culture continue to thrive in Bolivia and Peru, are among the most enduring indigenous peoples of South America. Their DNA holds a direct link to the ancient individuals buried in the residential and ceremonial areas of Tiwanaku, especially from the site of Lucumata, which spans a time range from 300 to 1500 years ago. Through whole genome sequencing and comparative population analyses, scientists revealed that there has been striking genetic continuity between these ancient highlanders and their modern Aymara descendants. The cultural and political upheavals of the Tiwanaku collapse around 1,000 years ago and the later Inca expansions did not significantly disrupt the local population. This makes the Aymara one of the most genetically continuous populations on the continent. Genomic clustering showed that individuals from Lukurmata, Ilave and surrounding areas formed a tight Andean highland population cluster. The term Ilave, in the context of ancient human genomic studies, refers to individuals represented by the samples IL-2, IL-3, and IL-7, who are from the Ilave region in Peru. These individuals are part of a larger data set used to study ancient human migration routes in South America. Specifically, they are used to represent the Andean region. The Ilave genetic samples from the Tiwanaku region continue to serve as the genetic anchor for the Aymara lineage whereas the Atlantic coastal findings reflect more complex migratory events and archaic admixture scenarios, possibly dating back over 40,000 years. These individuals carry genetic markers that are not only consistent across centuries, but also show minimal admixture from outsiders. The exception came from a few individuals buried in Tiwanaku's ritual core who exhibited mixed ancestries from the Amazon, Gran Chaco and Northern Andes. These outliers likely represent pilgrims, captives, or ceremonial participants drawn from afar to Tiwanaku's sacred center. Yet these individuals never constituted a dominant presence. They were ritually integrated, but did not replace the local population. A growing body of archaeological and genomic research reveals that the peopling of South America was far more complex than previously thought. While earlier studies pointed to a north-to-south migration along the Pacific coast, Recent DNA analysis from two ancient individuals in northeast Brazil has uncovered surprising new migration patterns. Researchers from Florida Atlantic University and Emory University found genetic evidence confirming the original Pacific coastal migration into the Andes. However, they also discovered, for the first time, ancient migrations along the Atlantic coast, moving in the opposite direction, northward. These Atlantic migrations may have begun near Lagoa Santa in central Brazil and spread both north toward northeast Brazil and Panama and south toward Uruguay. This creates a picture of interconnected migration routes, including a south-to-north Atlantic corridor linking Uruguay and Panama. This research presents the most comprehensive genetic evidence to date of diverse and multidirectional migration paths throughout Central and South America, challenging older models of a simple southward spread and revealing a web of early human movement across the continent. Culturally and linguistically, the Aymara maintain traditions that likely reach back to the Tiwanaku era. Their agricultural techniques, 
social structures and spiritual practices echo those inferred from archaeological remains at Tiwanaku. The persistence of the Aymara language, now spoken by millions, offers further evidence of the community's resilience. Jakaru and Kauki, the only other surviving Aymaran languages, confirm that the Aymaran linguistic branch has ancient and deep origins in the highlands. An additional cultural hallmark of the ancient Aymara is the practice of artificial cranial modification, or head elongation. This custom, which involves shaping an infant's skull through binding or shaping devices during early development, was widespread in the Tiwanaku Basin and other Andean cultures. Aymara skulls from the Tiwanaku era frequently exhibit elongated crania, with clear evidence of intentional deformation. This practice was not merely aesthetic, but held deep symbolic meaning, often signifying social status, ethnic identity, or group affiliation. The prevalence of cranial modification among Tiwanaku elites suggests it may have been a marker of nobility or spiritual power. Modern Aymara oral traditions and iconography still allude to long-headed ancestors, preserving the cultural memory of this striking physical trait. While head elongation leaves no genetic trace, its consistent appearance in Aymara-associated burials highlights the profound interplay between biology, identity and culture in the ancient Andes. What truly surprised researchers, however, was the deeper ancestral signature embedded in the DNA of the Tiwanaku people, the enduring legacy of archaic humans. Like all Native Americans, the ancient inhabitants of Tiwanaku carried segments of DNA inherited from both Neanderthals and Denisovans, two now-extinct cousins of Homo sapiens. These archaic gene sequences entered the human genome tens of thousands of years ago through interbreeding in Eurasia. As the ancestors of Native Americans migrated eastward across Asia and eventually into the Americas via Beringia, they brought with them these genetic relics of deep prehistory. New research adds further depth to our understanding of ancient Andean and Atlantic migrations. Ancient DNA from sites in northeast Brazil, Panama and Uruguay revealed a surprising amount of Denisovan ancestry, greater than Neanderthal in some individuals, particularly among populations that had travelled long distances along South America's Atlantic coast. While this high Denisovan signal was not found among highland groups like the Aymara, the study emphasises the diversity of ancestral pathways across the continent. In the ancient genomes from Ilave, Peru, located in the same region and contemporaneous with Tiwanaku, scientists identified specific proportions of archaic ancestry. Roughly 50% of the archaic sequences found were Neanderthal-specific, 25% were Denisovan-specific, and 25% were shared between the two archaic species. These proportions align with what is commonly observed in modern indigenous American populations. While these segments are not unique to Tiwanaku or Aymara individuals, they confirm that the builders of Tiwanaku were part of the broader Native American population tree that emerged from ancient Eurasian hybridization events. Interestingly, there is no evidence that the Aymara inherited any of the known Denisovan-derived genes associated with high-altitude adaptation, such as the EPAS1 gene found in Tibetans. Instead, the Aymara seem to have developed their own independent adaptations to life at extreme altitude. These include elevated haemoglobin concentrations, increased lung capacity, and vascular remodeling, all of which allow efficient oxygen transport in the thin air of the Altiplano. These adaptations evolved in situ over thousands of years, as the ancestors of the Aymara remained genetically and geographically isolated in the highlands starting nearly 9,000 years ago. Their endurance in one of the most extreme environments on Earth is a testament to human evolutionary flexibility. One question that has long intrigued researchers is whether the peoples of the central Andes, including the Aymara, bear any connection to early seafaring populations such as the Austronesians, who colonized vast stretches of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Austronesian genetic markers have been detected in some ancient South American populations on the Atlantic coast, particularly in Brazil, and there are hints of long-distance maritime contact in archaeological and linguistic evidence. There is an entire Pacific Ocean between Australasia and the Americas, 
and we still don't know how these ancestral genomic signals appeared in Central and South America without leaving traces in North America, said archaeologist Andre Luis Campelo dos Santos. However, there is no indication that the Aymara or their Tiwanaku ancestors show any trace of Austronesian admixture. Their genetic ancestry is firmly rooted in the Andean highlands, shaped by local continuity rather than transoceanic interaction. Altogether, the genetic story of the Tiwanaku builders is one of endurance and continuity. Far from being a melting pot, Tiwanaku was built and sustained by a stable highland population whose descendants continue to live around Tiwanaku. Through cutting-edge genomic analysis, scientists have illuminated the ancestral identity of this civilization, linking it directly to the modern Aymara. Their DNA tells a story of survival across millennia, through empires, collapses and environmental extremes, carrying within it traces of Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestors, but none of Austronesian origin. The builders of Tiwanaku were not mysterious outsiders or lost migrants. They were the same people who live there today, whose bodies and bloodlines have endured atop the Andes for over a thousand years.